Building a PC can be a daunting process for some people, especially if it's your first time. But once you know how to build one, it actually becomes easy and enjoyable. In this video, I'll show you how to build a PC, more specifically, a tiny PC. If you want to build a bigger PC, you can still watch this tutorial, as most of the PC building principles still apply. I'll quickly explain the use of all the components necessary for a build, take you through a step-by-step -step guide in building a PC, guide you through downloading and installing the operating system, as well as downloading the correct software drivers so that your new PC is running smoothly. This PC build costs only $900 at the time of this recording. It's an ideal build for gaming and productivity, superb for portability and for someone who prefers a compact desktop solution. Because this PC is so small, you will be able to take it anywhere, put it wherever you want, maybe even hide it. And you might even want to cradle it like it's your own baby because you love it so much. Let's start with the CPU, known as the Central Processing Unit. It's like the brain of a computer. It performs the majority of the calculations and the tasks needed for the computer to work. You'll either buy an Intel or AMD CPU. They come in different levels of processing power, so I would recommend choosing a CPU based on what you intend to use the PC for. For the CPU, I'm going with the AMD Ryzen 5 5600. It's not the latest generation of Ryzen CPUs, but its performance and current price makes the 5600 a good choice as it's exactly what we need for our gaming and productivity build. Which leads us to the motherboard. The motherboard is like the central hub of a computer, connecting all the components and ensuring all parts work together. They come in various sizes, from the largest E80X, the standard ATX, to the smallest, an ITX. Choosing either Intel or an AMD CPU will decide what motherboard route you take, meaning an Intel CPU is only compatible with an Intel motherboard, and an AMD CPU is only compatible with an AMD motherboard. The motherboard I'll be going with is an ASRock B550M ITX. It's compatible with Ryzen's 5600. It has Wi-Fi, perfect if you intend to move the PC and can't connect via Ethernet cable. It also has Bluetooth for wireless connectivity plenty of USB ports and an M.2 slot for an M.2 Gen 4 drive for fast storage. Speaking of storage, a storage drive stores the operating system, applications and user data. For storage, I'll be using a 1TB M.2 Gen 4 drive by Crucial, a fast drive that's compatible with our M.2 Gen 4 motherboard. It's a good amount of storage for what we need. You could obviously go for larger storage, but for the purpose of this build and budget, it will do the job. Next is RAM which is short for random access memory. It's like short-term memory for your computer. It's super fast, but forgets everything when you turn off your computer. It's like the more RAM you have, the more notes you can take and access at once, making your computer run smoother and handle more tasks simultaneously. Since our motherboard is DDR4 compatible, I've gone for crucial 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is two sticks of RAM at 16 gigabytes each. For any amount of RAM you go for, it's best to use at least two RAM slots for better performance. 32 gigabytes for this PC is more than enough. GPU or graphics processing unit, the graphics card is responsible for rendering images, videos and animations. The GPU focuses on graphics intensive operations such as gaming, video editing and 3D modeling. In the world of graphics cards, you currently have three brands to choose from, Nvidia, AMD and Intel. Nvidia and AMD are the most popular and the cards vary in price and performance, so only choose one that does the job for you. I'll be using a NVIDIA RTX 4060 Mini by Palette. For the current price, performance and actual size of the card, this makes a great choice for the budget tiny PC we are building. So those are the core components of a PC, but to power everything up, you will need a PSU, which is a power supply. The type of power supply you will need will depend on how much power your PC components require to run, the size of your PC, if you want detachable cables, and if you want to overclock your PC. I'll be using a 450 watt Flex ATX 1U PSU from Enhance, a slimline PSU made for small PC cases. 450 watts is more than we need, as the system we are building isn't power hungry and we're not looking to overclock this PC. If you need to check out how much power your new PC will need, you can find out on a website called AltaVision, where you can simply enter details of the components and it will calculate roughly how many watts you'll need for your power supply. And finally, you'll need a PC case to put all these parts in. They come in all shapes and sizes. Whatever size motherboard you buy 
would partly dictate what size case you choose or vice versa. But there are other things to consider, like how will the PC be called or what kind of storage will you be using, etc. The PC components we chose for today's build are for an ITX case. The case is the AO7 by SKTC. It's a super tiny 4.3 litre case, perfect for portability and a compact desktop solution. The design of the case is similar to the Velka 3, slightly bigger, but a fraction of the cost. For our build, you'll need some tools, a magnetic PC screwdriver set and a USB drive. Eight gigabytes will do. Later on, I'll show you how to download the Windows operating system onto it and use it to install Windows on our new PC. And don't worry, all the parts I've mentioned in this video will be linked in the video description down below. Now let's begin. Grab the motherboard, lift up the lever on the CPU socket. On the bottom left corner of the CPU is a tiny triangle that tells you what way the CPU should be placed, pointed towards the left corner of the CPU socket on the motherboard. And just gently place the CPU on top and let it naturally fall into place. Pull the lever down to lock it in. Nice and secure. Now, grab your magnetic screwdriver, unscrew the M.2 heatsink from your motherboard. On your M.2 drive, there's a little gap just here. When you install the drive, it should line up perfectly into the M.2 slot. Make sure you remove the plastic off the heatsink. Place it back on and screw it back in. Remove these brackets from the motherboard. We won't be using the stock cooler, so there's no need for these. Lift up the motherboard and remove the back plate. We don't need this either. To call our CPU, I'll be using a low profile CPU cooler by Thermalrite. Make sure you remove the plastic, unscrew and remove both mounting brackets from this cooler and replace them with these boomerang looking mounts. These are the AM4 mounting brackets from the box. Screw them into the back of the cooler. Then grab these four screws and screw them onto the mount. The CPU cooler should come with its own thermal paste in the box. I like to use one from a brand called Arctic, but feel free to use whichever one you want. There are quite a few ways to apply thermal paste. You can just do a blob in the middle, or you can do a nice big X. I feel like this way spreads a lot better after putting a CPU cooler on top. Lay the cooler flat on its front. Grab the motherboard by the edges of the board and flip it upside down. You'll know when the cooler is lined up correctly, as you should be able to see all four screws through the holes. Grab the AM4 backplate that came with the cooler and place it on the back of the motherboard. Grab these tiny screws from the CPU cooler box. Screw them into place by hand and tighten it with this thing that also came with the cooler. Keep rotating the screws until you can no longer tighten it, but don't overdo it because you also don't want to damage the board. Just quickly inspect the board to make sure everything is all secure. Now, let's grab the fan cable and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard and make sure it's in correctly. On the RAM stick, there's a little gap. When you insert the RAM, there should be a little groove in the slot that will perfectly fit into the gap of the RAM stick. And when it's installed properly, you should hear a satisfying click. Everything's looking good so far. Let's grab our PC case and unscrew the side panel. Inside, you should find a riser cable, screws and manual. The riser cable is used to extend the PCI connection from your motherboard to the GPU, as this case has two sides, one for the motherboard and one for the GPU. So let's remove the other side panel and the bottom panel, because this PC is so small, you'll need as much access as possible to help you fit the components inside. This should give us plenty of room to work with. On the back of the case, remove the two GPU cover slots and remove the cover on your riser cable. Squeeze it through the gap in the top part of the case. Grab the I.O. shield from your motherboard box. Place the shield from within the case with the audio I.O. ports at the top and firmly push the shield into the I.O. cutout of the case until you hear a click. Grab the motherboard and carefully insert the riser cable into the PCIe slot and push it down until it clicks into place. Grab the motherboard by the CPU cooler and carefully line up the motherboard's I.O. into the I.O. shield. You'll know if the motherboard is sitting correctly inside the PC case. The motherboard's mounting holes will line up with the standoffs. Grab the bag of screws that came with the PC case and grab four of these motherboard screws. Screw in all four corners of the motherboard. Don't over tighten it. Just stop when you can't turn the screw anymore. Lift up the PC to see if everything holds into place. Next, we're gonna connect our GPU to the PSU. Grab your PSU and locate the PCIe cable which is the six plus two connector. Stick it in the GPU and make sure it clicks into place. Next, grab the riser cable and insert the GPU until you hear click. At the top of the PC case is a tiny IO board, something we have to bear in mind when we install this GPU, as it's quite a tight area, but there is enough room to stick the cables behind it. Once that's clear, straighten up the GPU. Grab two screws that came with the PC case and secure the graphics card from the back. Next, let's secure the riser cable to the PC case. Grab two screws that came with the case and secure the riser cable. 
Let's grab our power supply and simply slot it in. Grab these three screws that came with the PC case and mount the drive to the case. Once that's done, lift the PC case and give it a good inspection. Make sure none of the core components is loose. Now we just have to connect a few cables. Grab the CPU cable, it's the 4 pin plus 4 pin, and connect it to the CPU power connection on a motherboard. Next, take the 24 pin cable and plug it into the motherboard. It's quite a tough cable to insert, so make sure it's fully connected. This is the power LED and power switch connector from the PC case. They're quite tiny to handle and it can be a bit fiddly. Plug the power LED in the panel header like so, and the power switch right next to it. Grab the PC case's USB 3 connection cable and insert it into the USB 3 header. Make sure you push it down firmly. So that's it, we've connected all the cables. Before we tidy up, we'll leave the cables as they are. Grab the HDMI cable, plug it into the back of the graphics card, connect it to your monitor, insert the power cord into your PC and turn it on. And moment of truth. If everything is connected properly and none of the parts are DOA, it should work fine. Bingo, it works. As long as something pops up on your screen, then we're all good. If there isn't anything on your screen, double check your connections. You can rewind this video and go through each step again and just make sure everything's connected properly. And if there's still nothing on your screen, you'll have to troubleshoot the PC and find out which component is not working. Let me know if you guys want a whole video on how to fix a PC. But if everything's working okay, turn off the PC by pressing the power button because you can now organize your cables and pop the front panel back on. To install the Windows operating system, grab your USB stick. You'll need to plug it into a Windows PC or laptop with internet. In a web browser, search for Windows 11 creation tool. Where it says installation media, click on download now. Open the file, select the relevant operating system, so in this case Windows 11. Install it on a USB hard drive. It can take some time to download. Once it's done, hit finish and eject the hard drive. Plug it into the back of the PC along with a keyboard and mouse. Turn on the PC. It might take a moment to load, so I'll speed things up in this video. You will get to a screen where it will ask you to activate Windows. For now, I'm going to click on I don't have a product key. Here you can choose what version of Windows you want. I'm going to choose Windows 11 Pro. When you get to this screen, click on Customize to install Windows only, as we're installing a fresh copy of Windows. It will ask you where do you want to install Windows. We've only got one drive installed, which is the 1TB M.2 drive. Select it and hit Next. It will take a few minutes to install. Once it's done, the PC will restart. So give it a moment to load up and voila. The next few steps is just typical Windows setup. So you can do that yourself. You will need internet connection to complete the setup. Luckily, the PC we've built has both ethernet and Wi-Fi. However, if you don't have internet, there is ways to bypass it. If you Google how to finish Windows 11 setup without internet, there are plenty of sites that are helpful. Once you are connected, go through the next steps until you get to this screen. You'll need to sign into your Microsoft account to continue. Then you'll have to go through a few more steps and then we're done. Welcome to your new PC. But before we do anything else, we need to reset the PC so we can go into the motherboard's BIOS. Once the PC has reset, it will take you to the boot screen. Hold down F2 or delete on your keyboard and that will take you into the BIOS. It may look intimidating at first, but once you figure out some of the settings, it actually becomes easy to navigate. Click on the advanced tab at the top and then AMD PBS. Click on PCIe X16 bus interface and select Gen 3. The reason why we had to do this is because the PC case came with a PCIe 3.0 riser cable. Our graphics card is PCIe 4.0, which is Gen 4. So we had to downgrade it to Gen 3 in BIOS in order for the graphics card to work properly. Once that is done, exit BIOS by saving and exit. That should restart the PC and let's get back into Windows. So the first thing I like to do is update Windows. Head down to the search bar, type in Windows Update, click on Windows Update Settings and there should be updates available to install. So click on Install All. It may take a few minutes and you might have to restart the computer. If you do have to restart, repeat this process until there's no more Windows updates to install. Next, we have to install the chipset driver. Open up the web browser and search for the brand of your motherboard. In our case, it will be ASRock. In their search bar, search for the model of our motherboard. That will be the B550M ITX. Download their latest chipset driver and install it. Next, we're going to download the latest GPU driver. We have an NVIDIA graphics card, so head over to NVIDIA and download GeForce Experience. Once you're in, you can check for updates. It would automatically detect what graphics card you have, so you can just simply download it and install it. 
And if you have an AMD graphics card, head over to their website and download their auto detect software. That would also automatically download the correct driver for your graphics card. Once our graphics driver is installed, we can now unplug the HDMI cable and use a display port cable to give us a higher refresh rate on our monitor. In other words, the motion on the display will look a lot smoother. To do that, right click the desktop, show more options and click on NVIDIA control panel. In change resolution, change the refresh rate to the highest your monitor can go. So my monitor is 144Hz. Hit apply and click on yes. And you should be able to notice the motion is a lot smoother than before. And lastly, if you want full access to Windows 11 Pro, you will need to purchase a Windows 11 Pro CD key. I got mine from a website called Gamers Outlet. Make sure the key that you purchase matches up with the Windows version you've installed. So I've installed Windows 11 Pro and I've purchased a Windows 11 Pro CD key. To activate it, click on the Windows Start menu. Go to your name, change account settings, activate now, and change your CD key. And type in the product key that you purchased and activate. And that's it, we are done with this PC build. I hope this video has helped you in one way or another. Hopefully you can see how easy it can be to build a PC. But if you have any questions about the build or anything in the video, drop me a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. And if you want to build something similar to the PC in this video, all the parts will be linked in the video description below. There will be a second part to this video where I'll be testing a bunch of different games. So if you have any games in mind that you would want me to test, let me know which ones. But that's it. Thanks for watching.